Welcome back. Political and economic uncertainty in the U.S. has prompted many of the best and brightest academics in that country to consider leaving for other countries. This comes especially as top U.S. universities, including Columbia and Harvard, have been targeted for defunding by the U.S. White House if they do not agree to changing certain policies, including, of course, policies on diversity, equity, and inclusion. Many of the disenchanted academics are thinking of moving to Canada. But some Canadian scientists say that while the idea has merit, we should be doing first more to support those scientists who are already here. One of those is Louis E. K. He's a professor of molecular genetics, biochemistry, uh, and chemistry at the University of Toronto. He's also a member of the Order of Canada, an award winner, and an academic himself who many years ago, albeit, returned to Canada from the United States where he did advanced graduate work. Uh, Professor Kay, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, is actively recruiting U.S. scientists uh, in the current environment, is that, is that uh, the right thing for Canada to do in this moment? Well, you know, I, 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 I think that it's always good to recruit the top people, but you have to have a framework by which you can, you know, have them come into the country and be successful. And what I'm concerned about is a lack of general funding for Canadian science. And so if there's not enough funding to adequately provide for those of us who are already here, then one has to wonder, well, what's the situation if we bring in, you know, 20 or 50 or 100 or uh, you know, of the top-notch uh, academics uh, uh, from, from the U.S. And by academics, I'm, of course, just referring to science. I mean, science is very expensive. It requires several years to build up a lab. It requires instrumentation, a huge startup uh, initially. And, and unless you have the funds to be able to do that, then the question is, well, you know, um, are you setting people up for success or uh, for failure? I'm, you know, very, very positive about bringing the best people aboard once you have the infrastructure to be able to support them in a manner that they were supported previously in the U.S. and certainly uh, need to be supported to be successful uh, were they to come to Canada. We compare ourselves on a range of uh, economic measures, uh, including uh, fiscal measures and uh, and uh, measures like this, support for science, to other country, other advanced economies around the world. How does Canada's R and D spending compare internationally to to countries that we should be compared with? Well, I think it's at the sort of lower end. Uh, we we don't do nearly as well as uh, the UK, Denmark. Uh, U.S. obviously, I think we could do a, a a lot better. And the the reality is that the the monies we're talking about, well, they are substantial, uh, are not so substantial compared to the expenditures that uh, we make on an annual basis. Um, you know, if we could double the funding that we have available to us as scientists, the uh, output would be. Um, certainly much larger than double, and we'd be able to, you know, come up with uh, a lot more advances that ultimately, in the fullness of time, would lead to uh, benefits to society at large, not just in Canada, but throughout the world. And I think that's the important point to, to make for government. This is not a four-year kind of cycle thing, often to come up with ideas and to nurture them and to uh, ultimately come up with a product and take multiple years, but if you don't have the right finances to be able to do so, and it all starts with fundamental research, with basic research, with asking the questions, well, what about, what if, uh, just curiosity-driven research, which often leads in ways that the scientists don't fully appreciate at the time, of course, to, to advance it. So you've got to have the uh, initial expenditure of capital to uh, enable uh, scientists to be as creative as possible and to focus on the research, not on writing grant after grant after grant. You must be frustrated what you, when you look at the, uh, the now three costed platforms that are out there from the Liberal Party, the Conservative Party, and the New Democratic Party. I've looked in some detail at them, not exhaustively. I haven't looked at every line, but I certainly have not seen anything on R&D funding. Uh, are you of the same impression? Yeah, I think that basic research uh, always takes a hit, and, and it's... It's remarkable that that should be the case because we live in an era where, you know, we've been bombarded by microbes, by various diseases. People are living longer, and as a consequence, 
you know, succumbing to very uh, various neurological uh, ailments that that require in-depth research. It's expensive research, but the benefits uh, are going to be tremendous. And if we don't actually do the research now, the cost to society will be, uh, you know, much more prohibitive than 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 actually doing the research. So, um, am I surprised uh, or disappointed? Well, I've become sort of used to this. So, I think that the real important role of scientists is to advocate on behalf of basic research and uh, to ensure that uh, the appropriate people in government can understand that uh, this is not just about them and their political cycle. This is about the future long term. And this is about, uh, you know, one's children and one's great grandchildren and grandchildren. And people can understand that. They understand the far reaching implications of of uh, development. And I think if you pose the problem or the solution to the problem in that way, that we're funding things so that uh, the next generation can benefit, well, then uh, it's pretty difficult to argue with. Professor Kay, thank you so much. That's Louis E. Kay, Professor of Molecular Genetics, Biochemistry and Chemistry at the University of Toronto, and also a senior scientist at Sick Children's Hospital in Toronto and a member of the Order of Canada. Up next, the 